What's up, party people? Welcome to a special episode of Crossplay, the Whatnots His Own video game podcast. That's right, this episode is a little different than what you're used to, rather than the usual four, me, Ignacio, Kyle, and Alan. It is just me, Gino, and I am joined by a very important guest today that is here to talk about all things Final Fantasy and the most recent 14 online announcement showcase that happened this past Friday, where they announced a new expansion and several other things that come with all that. So we got some very exciting stuff to go over and an awesome conversation ahead of us. And we're going to try and treat this episode as sort of like a recruitment. You know, we're going to try and convince hey. you. Start yep. playing. <laughs> playing the game. But yeah, as I said, my name is Gino Viteri. I will be your host for today. And I am joined by the one and only Asian 47 <laughs> himself, Michael Hyam from GameSpot. Hey, What's up, Michael? How are you? How's hey, life? Things, things are good. Things are good. Uh, after the... the um... The announcement showcase for Final Fantasy XIV, man, my heart, my heart was full. I felt, I felt like yeah. you, you always, I always go through like these, um, these, uh, these peaks and valleys when it comes to like things I get excited about. I'm like, oh, all right, like I was hyped up about this one thing. Like, yeah. What's next? Oh, this new game came out. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I play it. I finish it. I'm like, all right, what's next? Yeah. What's next? And I feel like the past couple years is just like nothing but peaks after peak after peak after peak. Uh, and then real, this man. is just the latest one, man. I am, man. Ah, Final yeah. Fantasy XIV has been a journey, and it's it's not slowing down. It really it's not has. slowing down. So this new expansion, like this is this is the time to get hyped up mm-hmm. about. It. And I'm I you know it goes without saying I'm super hyped up for Endwalker. Yeah, no, I'm super excited. I you know I I live reacted to the to the mm-hmm. announcement. I cried. I yelled. I screamed. I feel you. So there's so many, Ooh. and there's still so many things that we yep. have to see. So I'm I'm super excited about all that. Mm-hmm. But uh. Anyway, Michael, so I, I first, I guess, discovered you um, around August okay. of this past year, where you, you published an article on GameSpot, which is like a beginner's oh, guide yeah. to, to 14 online. And that you talk about like the approachability mm-hmm. of the game, uh, not only to newcomers of the franchise, but uh, to people that have never really played an MMO. So obviously, guys, if you haven't checked it out, please go check out that article. Super great article. And then shortly after that, I found you, um, uh, after I found you on Twitter, you started streaming mm-hmm. on Twitch. And uh, I checked you out there, started talking with you there, and quickly realized how, you know, you're super kind, knowledgeable, awesome to talk to. So it was super awesome to discover you. Thank there, you. Thank you. But that is how I know <laughs> yeah. you. For the people that don't know who Michael Hyam is, who are uh, you? Damn. All right. So I was born in, uh, ni- no, I'm just kidding. I'm. I don't know how far back do I want to go. All right, uh, l- l- let well, me. Um, however you want. Since we're since we're on the topic of video games, let me kind of contextualize it in the realm of video games. So, uh, listen, yeah. your boy was like five years old. I was barely learning how to read, but you know what? I had Final Fantasy VI, which is Final Fantasy III in North America. I had Super Mario RPG, and I had Chrono Trigger. Um, my brother had because this was like 1996. So my brother had sold his collection of Genesis and SNES games to get a PlayStation One. And he said, look, I'm going to give you the SNES, though. I'm going to sell the Genesis, but you can have the SNES. Pick three games that you want. Those are the three games that I picked. Uh, and, like, that, that's the only, like, other than, like, uh, my mom got, uh, like, the Toy Story license game for SNES at, at a yard sale or some shit. And I, I played that, too. But I was like, yo, I'm just, like, I, I swear I beat all those games, like, ten times over. Because that's all I had. That's, that's all, like, summer vacation. I'm five years old. I ain't got, what am I going to do? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to play, I'm going to play some yeah. video games. And then obviously, like RPGs back in the day, they don't got quest logs, they don't got waypoints. So to figure no, out don't. what to do, it's like you need to talk to the NPCs. You need to remember what was told in uh, dialogue sequences. So that that's you know that's how I learned how to read. And uh, when when I got to school, I was just like writing all like teachers like how do you know these words? Why why are you writing like mm-hmm. like this is some kind of like dramatic play or something? It's because like <laughs> games like Final Fantasy and Chrono Trigger like yeah. uh, that's all I know. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, mm-hmm. that's uh, that's kind of how I got my start with video games, and that's why RPGs are so and storytelling is so important to me in games. Um, so over yep. the years, I love games like Deus Ex, the original Star Wars: Knights of the Old Republic, um, and then eventually found uh, other RPGs like Persona. And as you know, I'm sure you're familiar. And if anyone follows me, they know yeah. uh, like how much I love uh, Persona and Shin Megami Tensei and just like oh man and then I got to Yakuza recently also well recently as in like three or four years ago and then like yeah 
yeah, always, always loving Final Fantasy and like Xenosaga, Xenogear, like man, all, oh, man, and like the, it's <laughs> only recently until I like really embraced the themes of a lot of these games where it's like, yo, the power of friendship, uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, just like so with games, it's I, I like you know, I'm, I'm a spicy shooty boy. I play some Call of Duty. Your, your boy is nice in Call of Duty, like of course. Yeah, man. Oh yeah? yeah, I used to, I used to play. I used to be. I used to be good on Call of Duty on 360, yeah. but after that, you, you fall fall off. Yeah, Downhill it's it's here. fine. It's fine. And I used to play a lot of Counter Strike too, <laughs> like competitively. Um, mm. but yeah, so uh, I feel like the the types of games I gravitate towards also inform how uh, I don't know how I what I value in games and especially how I mm. cover them because uh, now I've been at GameSpot for over four years at this point. And that's that's what I like to put into my work is to kind of like explore the the emotional aspects of these stories and what these stories are trying to say, whether it's uh, social commentary, what it, what it has to say about humanity or like especially with Final Fantasy 14, as we'll dig into probably uh, deeper into this podcast. But there's just there's there's yeah. all these games that I, I know and love. There's so much to un- unpack because it's it, in the process of trying to write about them. I am also learning mm-hmm. about myself in a way. And then I step back and I think about games like Persona, Yakuza, and Final Fantasy. And I'm like, yo, these, these I wouldn't say that like they're teaching me something, but they're helping me kind of um, like walk myself through my own uh, thoughts and feelings, I guess. So I'm very thankful for those kinds of games. And that is, uh, <laughs> it's kind of, yeah. it's kind of made me who I am in a way, especially as it relates to my career, because you know, I get paid to, um, cover games. Um, that's not the only thing I do, obviously, with GameSpot, but it's it, those are those are yep. the things I kind of I value a lot, and those are the things I'm gonna look back on. Like I'll I'll write news articles, I'll get on videos, and I'll, I'll cover all sorts of games. But the things I'll remember most are the ones where I put kind of put that put that heart and soul into it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm also as it not relates to video games. I'm from I don't know <laughs> if anyone's gonna be familiar, but I'm from Southeast San Diego. It's a it's a nice little well. It's a it's a uh, a part of San Diego that no one really knows because it's sort of like I don't know it gets treated as like oh that's the hood that's the dangerous place but we got hard out there mm. man we we look we look <laughs> out for each other you know there's this bad shit going on around there but you know what it's it's like it made us who we are in a way uh, so like hey if anyone wants to pull up anyone want to pull up and talk shit like <laughs> I'm not I'm not trying to start nothing on here but. I'm so, what I'm saying is like, <laughs> hey, listen, I, I don't, I don't, I don't fuck around, man. <laughs> um, so, okay. uh, but yeah, I got a lot of love uh, and appreciation for where I'm from uh, and uh, the people who raised me in that community. Um, and it makes it makes you um, makes me think about how I can do a lot with very little uh, because that's how we all grew up in in that part of town. It's like, how can we make the most of yeah. very few resources and very few opportunities and. Uh, I feel like that's kind of that's a big part of how I've been able to uh, make moves in the video game industry because it's it's not easy. It's very it's very exclusive, and not in a way like oh shit, it's exclusive. Like oh yeah, I'm I'm an insider or whatever. But it, it's it's hard. It's hard. It, there's very few opportunities within the industry, so um, yeah. I'm very thankful for it, and I like to think that I'm making the most of it. Uh, of course, recent times have all got us down. Um, it's tough in the streets, yo. Like damn. It's tough mm-hmm. for everyone, so, um, and people, you know, God's working on all of us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so we we uh, yeah, it's it's it has affected our work, our thoughts, our feelings, how we talk to people, and all that stuff. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's uh, but uh, I feel like we're in a we're in a fairly decent spot, all things considered. So I'm feeling all right. Yeah, yeah. For for all things considered, obviously, like you mentioned with everything going on uh it's also uh a opposite of that we've been able to do stuff like this yeah. that you and I are doing you know people have connected online a lot a lot uh, more uh people that haven't been able to you know oh we can't meet in person obviously but we probably wouldn't have been able to meet in person or had the time prior I probably wouldn't have been streaming if it wasn't but, uh so yeah so yeah. there's been a lot of opportunities for for people that have opened up because of this. So it is obviously it's super tough, but there's is things to look uh, back on that have been good. Yeah, for, def- for, definitely. For I feel you on that this year. So, so, so yeah, speaking of your, of your Twitch 
uh, Michael, we mentioned your Twitch. Uh, you recently had a, this is completely opposite sure, yeah, yeah. of what we're talking about, <laughs> way different from what we're talking about. But I did want to ask you that I have you here. You had a, a just chatting stream. I did, you, yeah. <laughs> and you spoke about a lot of different uh -huh. things. I miss it, unfortunately. It was a little late. But I, want, I wanted to ask you about Dogecoin. Oh, my God. Y'all want to talk about Dogecoin, <laughs> eh? Oh. Like, hey, did you yo, invest in this? Yo, Should listen. I invest in this if I want to get rich? What's, what's the deal here? Uh, yeah, that was, that was an interesting time. You know, it's <laughs> funny you bring it up today because uh, Dogecoin actually uh, spiked this morning again. I noticed. Yeah, I, noticed. I, 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 I already, already <laughs> I, I, see, I see you, Kyle. <laughs> uh, I, already, I actually already <laughs> cashed out on, on my investment. So um basically what i was talking about was like what happened with dogecoin and how i was able to fucking ca cash out on that um so it, amid all the gamestop stock stuff because this was right when gamestop stocks hit a critical mass uh in, in terms of the news cycle and what was actually happening with the value of the gamestop shares and i thought to myself it was too late for me because like gamespot had already a game <laughs> wow <laughs> Shit. Imagine, yeah. GameStop Imagine had that. already spiked and it was like, all right, this is too late. It's it's already hitting hitting its, yeah. its peak. Uh so I'm not gonna get involved in that. And I thought to myself, like, okay, because I was I was scrolling, I was looking through the the various um, investment applications, and I realized how easy it is to buy cryptocurrency. You just put money into your account, your investment account. And you click yeah. buy on cryptocurrency, and then you got it right, th right then and there. I, this is before they yeah, put in it. restrictions. Now there's a lot of restrictions in how much um, cryptocurrency you can buy. Um, but at the uh, at that in that moment, I was like, okay, GameStop shares went up because it essentially went viral over the internet. And I thought to myself, like, okay, I was looking at cryptocurrency. Like Bitcoin is super. Like there's no way I can buy Bitcoin. Uh, and I was looking at like yeah. Ethereum is whatever that's kind of like old hat at this point and i was looking at dogecoin i'm like dogecoin was pennies on the dollar and i was like you know what i i bet i fucking bet that these internet <laughs> these internet motherfuckers is going to try and make dogecoin go viral too and i was like you know what i'll yeah. put a couple hundred dollars on dogecoin whatever it, it like if nothing happens i can just cash out and i'll have the same amount of money as i put in but if it go, if it does yeah. go viral boy uh, and that's, that's what I, that's what I did. I was like the, the night before, uh, um, I went to bed I was like, oh, I'll put a couple hundred dollars. We'll see what happens the next day that the, literally the next day, the, the value of Dogecoin was spiking wildly. I was just like, I couldn't even concentrate on work. Cause I had my investment app on the second screen. I was just like watching go up, up. I'm like, do I cash <laughs> out now? Like I was had my, I was f hovering over the, 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 the sell, the sell button to sell my, uh, my cryptocurrency and i was like yeah. do i do it now do i do it now oh no it's spiking or oh, it's dropping it's dropping it's dropping oh it's spiking again oh uh and yeah. so to kind of give a context to what the value of it was so i had bought a bunch of dogecoin when it was a penny like 1.1 pennies and then that day it went up to uh three cents and went up to four cents five cents six cents dropped down to five went back up to seven Dropped a little bit more. Went up. It peaked at eight cents. So basically, uh, and Dogecoin had been much cheaper before I had bought it. So I inv so I bought a bunch of Dogecoin at one uh, at a penny per coin. That value went mm -hmm. spiked up to eight times the value. Unfortunately, I did not cash out at the peak because I was like, "What if it peaks more? What if it peaks more?" So that's the thing about investment with uh what we call that's volatile. It's like it'll spike, it'll drop drastically throughout the course of the day that's a volatile um that's 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 something that's volatile in like investment and that that's the thing too i'm like yo i can cash out now and get like a couple thousand bucks or i could yeah. wait and maybe it'll go to ten thousand bucks at this point and then uh eventually I, at the end of the day it had reached a point it's like if i cash out now i will at least be satisfied with how much i made so i cashed out and it kind of like it had evened out a little bit so i got out mm -hmm. at a pretty good time it's spiking again but it is yeah, I the thing the thing they're trying to they're trying to get it to a dollar that's not gonna happen can you imagine i guess because you have people like elon musk and yeah. i just saw nick jonas tweet about it like, nick jonas so, the fuck? yeah i just saw he tweeted about it so there's people tweeting about mm -hmm. it I, I i don't know man it, this can I guess we'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, uh, one thing I did say on that stream was that um, 
like Dogecoin can spike in value, but it does have its limits. It's not going to get mm-hmm. to a dollar. Like for it to get to a dollar, like <laughs> that would break. Like I don't think there is enough people in the world who are willing to invest the money that would get it to spike to a dollar. Like that is very unrealistic. It even getting like re- it hasn't reached uh, ten cents yet. But if it reached ten cents, that is that is wild in and of itself. That like because mm-hmm. if it gets to a dollar, you break the fucking economy. <laughs> like <laughs> I don't even think there's enough yeah people with money in the world to get it to, to that point. But um, yeah, a lot of people have they've cashed out and they've made a lot of money off of this off of a meme. It's meme currency, really. It and is. It's, yeah. yeah, that's just that's just so wild to me, man. But hey. I got mines, but I I think the the message uh, I also sent during that stream was that investment is not like this ever. Like once in a blue moon, something like this will happen. Like, yeah. yeah. So like, I mean, Dogecoin is will will fluctuate in value very much, but in terms of like that level of spiking, especially when it uh, as it relates to GameStop stocks, that that n- it never happens. Like investment is investing is something that you don't see. Um, you don't reap the benefits a day later or a week later or even a month later. It's like over several years, do you actually get something yeah. valuable, valuable out of it? So I know it was like in the conversation, it's fascinating, it's interesting and all that. Um, but for folks who don't under, who might not be familiar with what investing entails, like that is, yeah, that's, it's something like we'll be right. talking about it yeah. the rest of the year. Yeah. Okay. That's not what we're going to be talking about the whole yes. time. Yes. Yeah. Today. Sorry. So, Sorry. So, so let's. Uh, so let's. Uh, before we get into the thick of it, obviously, we we'll get into the whole showcase. I do want to. You mentioned a little bit about how you started playing Final Fantasy. Mm-hmm. What is your whole history with the franchise? Like, which ones have you played? Mm-hmm. How 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 into it are you? Uh, let's see. So, like I mentioned, Final Fantasy six. Uh, which mm-hmm. was one of the SNES games I held on to uh, when I was a kid. And I played that a lot. And also, before, before he, my brother got rid of it, I played a lot of Final Fantasy IV, uh, which is so 2 and 3. Like, North America had a weird uh, number scheming system for Final Fantasies at the time, yeah. but for just to keep things consistent, it was Final Fantasy IV and Final Fantasy VI. And yeah. so I remember four being really, really hard at the time because uh, I was like five years old, six years old, whatever. Uh, and then I, f- I thought six was easier, but, but I had more time with six and little did I know that that would be remembered as one of the best final fantasies ever, even to this day. Um, yeah. and th- the thing is the thing that really hooked me about it is I really like RPG combat systems. I like the tactical aspect, making decisions and then lining thing, lining up this spell, this attack, making sure I keep my, my party alive. I just was just fascinated by 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 that like kind of tactical element of it so four and six were formative for me another thing too hooked me is the music i'm replaying final fantasy four like actually this weekend and i'm like man these soundtrack nobuo uematsu is just a genius when it came to using the the limitations of you know those old consoles and the the, the soundboards of those old consoles and just creating layered music that is just so catchy so so um so detailed and just really capturing the emotions of like Terra's theme. Terra's theme in the beginning of Final Fantasy VI, it's just like, yo, and you have like the, the mechs walking through the snow and then it's playing Terra's. I'm yeah. like, yo, this is just a masterpiece, timeless, uh, timeless stuff and all the battle mm-hmm. themes, the boss battle themes, the overworld themes. Um, those are the things I remember a lot because I'll listen, to, like I'll, I mentioned on Twitter, like I don't remember much about Final Fantasy IV because I played it when I was so young. But I listen to music and I remember, like, I remember how I felt. I don't remember exactly what happened in the games, but I remember how I felt. Um, and that, that's kind of like something that's been very consistent through, obviously, the whole Final Fantasy franchise. So eventually my brother, like I said, uh, my brother, he's like eight years older than me. So he, he, got, he had a job. Um, he was making money. Uh, so he got a PS1. And he was a Final Fantasy stan also. And I remember just watching him play Final Fantasy VII. Uh, throughout the the entire his entire playthrough i was just like right there with him and i was like ask questions like oh go there do this do that oh what about this mm-hmm. and he was like oh like we're gonna get the strategy guy we're gonna complete this thing we're gonna fight all we're gonna fight emerald weapon ruby weapon we're gonna fight all the weapons 
Uh, we would do all the side quests that the game doesn't even uh, mention. And I was just like fascinated by like, yo, these games are like 60, 70 hours long. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that th- th- doesn't even tell you that secrets. Um, same yeah. thing with Final Fantasy VIII. And then uh, so by the time nine came out, um, my brother gave me his PS1. So um, I was able to revisit seven and eight on my own. And also I got to play nine by myself as well. So even like the PS1 era is was also formative to me. Um, and again, it's like the, the music and then like the, the combat systems and the boss battles and just how deep those games go. Um, and then again, it, it's like the, the scripts of those games got deeper. They got more complex. The stories got more complex, especially Final Fantasy VIII. And, and for I was like nine or ten at the time. And I'm like, yo, these, these are the stories I was. I wasn't reading many books, but I was I was playing some RPGs, man. Yeah. Like, um, so yeah. And then eventually, my brother got a PS2, so I watched him play Final Fantasy X. Same thing. Um, then I picked it back up years later after I watched him play it, and then I kind of fell off actually. So after Final Fantasy X, um, that was my last Final Fantasy for quite a long time. Oh, and I didn't even mentioned tactics. So in the PS1 era, my brother and I also fuck with tactics heavy. Oh my god, I love Final Fantasy Tactics so much. Because uh, it really distilled down, like, the things that I love about those combat systems is the tactical aspect. And obviously, like, if you build a turn-based tactics game around that, like, hell yeah, let's go. Um, and also, that, yeah. that story is uh, very special as well. And, like, the job system, uh, that, that was wild. Um, so, yeah, and then I fell off after, after a while. So I, didn't, I never actually played 12 uh, in its entirety. I picked up the uh, Zodiac Age uh, remake or remaster uh, and played it for a little while just to see what it was, but I haven't like fully played it through. And um, obviously, yeah. I didn't have the means to play Eleven. I wasn't into MMOs at the time. I was too young to be playing MMOs. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, and I skipped over Thirteen. I kind of went through a phase where I no longer played many uh, Japanese games or Japanese RPGs. I think the there's a gap between Xenosaga. I played Xenosaga episode one and there was a huge gap until like the 2010s until I when I picked up RPGs big time again, which is weird. So I missed out on missed out on the initial release of 14. So by the time 15 came out, I had I was like, oh, OK, like I'm, I'm back open to the, the, these realms, this realm of games. Play 15. I liked it for what it was. It just didn't ha- capture that same magic. I, I like 15 a lot. Uh, but it just wasn't this grand scale of things that I remember from 10 and 7, 8, 9 and 6 and 4 and all that. Um, obviously, not, ga- not every game can do that. <laughs> um, yeah. But I got into Final Fantasy 14 about two years ago. It was two years ago. Um, yeah, in February um, in 2019. Because that time I was looking for a live service game that would hook me. Like, oh, it'd be cool. Like, I tried Destiny. Um, I, I played WoW in the past. I played Anarchy Online in the past, but uh, and I enjoyed those games. But I never liked got into those games in the way that they would like you. You don't see the best parts of those games unless you really invest yourself in them, right? It's the end game content, um, and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and getting into guilds and all that. And I never got that deep into MMOs until Final Fantasy 14 cuz then I I got like the base game and Heaven's Word for free and I was like oh okay yeah I got free uh, all right and then I got like 2 months of uh, subscription for free and I was like all right let me see what this let me see what this is about and I was enjoying it I was like okay this, this is kind of cool it's like you know it's got some Final Fantasy theming around it I all the chocobo theme I I know that I'm like oh, I was kind of whimsical mm-hmm. like all oh, these places look really nice and the music was just really really hooking me uh, and this is in a Realm Reborn too so this is like the like this is just what like the game isn't even getting to the good parts and I was just like enjoying it like yeah I'd spend a couple hours a day just leveling up doing quests I'm like oh this is kind of whimsical or whatever I don't really I wasn't really invested invested in it I was like oh we'll see how this goes I wasn't sure if I was going to stick around with it but uh <laughs> what I what I, you know this, this is really dumb so I started a character like a throwaway character just to like feel the game out then I had bought a um, a Fantasia potion to redesign my character, and I made her look like Chie Sato- Satonaka from Persona 4, and I named her Chie Satoneko, mm-hmm. and she's a cat, she's a Mikote, and I, she looked, she was just like, like a perfect design, I'm like, yo, this is like a one-to-one creation of Chie, and the Chie is like my favorite character in video games, and I was like, you know what, 
I'm like super invested in this now. Like Chie is now in a realm, yeah. a realm reborn. Like, yo, she's in Final Fantasy 14. Yeah, she like jumped through a TV and now she's boom, she's in Final Fantasy. So that's actually kind of what got me invested to see a realm reborn through. But then once I got to Heaven's Word, like shit changed where like now the focus is on how much I actually care about this world that I'm playing in. So Heaven's Word is like something that really hooked me and um, that's when I was like really started to appreciate I think the 2.5 quests actually um, kind of spoilerish but things change like there's a dramatic shift in what happens around the world and the 2.5 quests and I was like so and then things happen around the like the scions like shit changes for them the main cast of characters and I'm like oh damn I actually care about these characters this is kind of cool this is kind of yeah. unexpected I didn't expect an MMO to like to to make me like care and fall in love with like these these characters like i thought this was just like oh we're gonna fight wild bosses with and do mmo shit and level up and all that and then that was when i realized how much work gets put into final fantasy final fantasy 14 story and then obviously mm -hmm. early on in heaven's word like when you're walking through the snow and you see the intro cinematic yo the intro cinematic to heaven's word i was like that's when i knew i'm like this game is something special and then just like being with yeah. Alfino you know, the whole time because he's trying to be like the diplomat and all that stuff. And I got really invested in like who he was and just understanding uh, like Heaven's Word is very political. So Ishgard politics and uh, like the mm -hmm. church and state and all that's like that is core to the Heaven's Word narrative. And I'm like, yo, they really went all out on this. And from that point on, I was a stan. Absolutely. And then yeah. so and then I got to Stormblood and this is both like leading up to Shadowbringers. And I'm like, by the time Shadowbringers came out, I still wasn't caught up, but by the end of 2019, I remember it was Thanksgiving 2019 when I finally played through Shadowbringers, and the end to 5.0, the Shadowbringer story, just completely wrecked me, man. I was just like, this is... Mm -hmm. li what happens with the Crystal Exarch, who we, you know who it, he is, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. what happens with the Crystal Exarch and Emmett Selk before the final battle i will always remember as one of my favorite video game moments ever ever top five yeah. top three maybe top one moments yes dude. and yeah i didn't even talk about how storm how much i like stormblood too because stormblood has a lot to do with like the alamegans taking back their home leading a revolution uh -huh. and then like the domans doing the same t same thing as well leading like this two two this two-pronged assault against the Garlean Empire. I was like, yo, this is so wild. Yeah. The Stormblood music it's, is just so... so mm, it just really felt so like great, you're yeah. doing something bigger than yourself. And you're taking back the homes yeah. of these people who have been oppressed by the Garlean Empire. I'm like, yo, Stormblood is where it's at. Mm -hmm. And you go into Shadowbringers, it's just like a totally different tone where it's a lot more personal, where like the whole, the whole realm is at stake. Yet Shadowbringers feels very personal. Like you just you understand who the scions are in such depth that the game hadn't really gone into before. And I think yeah. like that reminds me of why I love games like Yakuza and Personas because these character stories have something broader to say. And that's exactly what Shadowbringers did. And man, 5.3, absolutely. Like, <laughs> so 5.3, the end of 5.3 is, I don't know which which moment I like more, the end of 5.0 or the end of 5.3. Those are like my 1A and 1B greatest moments of all time in video games, man. Um, yeah. And yeah, from that point on, which is today, I just... Like Final Fantasy XIV is the centerpiece of my love for the franchise now. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, I remember 6 and the 7 Remake. Obviously, when 7 Remake came out, I played that through and I just absolutely... Absolutely loves what Seven Re Remake did, and a very emotional experience, man. Um, but for me, yeah. fourteen is the fourteen is the kind of the focal point for now, in which I see, like, whenever I play, because like fourteen references all the other Final Fantasies a lot in its material. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's more of like, yeah, like my 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 perception of the rest of the franchise. Now I compare it to like, because yeah, it's an MMO. And I do the MMO shit, but that's not my favorite part of the game. My favorite part is its storytelling and just how, true, how yeah. deep the lore goes and how the, the writing team leverages that deep lore to tell affecting stories. And now that's like the standard of which I hold other games to. And I'll never forget that. And obviously, I won't be forgetting about it for the rest of the year because Endwalker is coming, <laughs> at the end, coming in fall 2021. 
So that's my history yeah, with Final that's... Fantasy. So, so uh, yeah, so that's yeah, my huge history. Fourteen is my biggest foothold in the franchise mm-hmm. itself because I haven't played a lot of the other ones. I've I, I was introduced to seven through the movies. Oh yeah, uh, I don't know if you saw Advent Children yeah. and and all that stuff. I played Crisis Core on PSP. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dirge of Cerberus. I don't know if yeah, you, know yeah. <laughs> you see that one. Vincent Valentine, all that stuff. So that that was like I knew about uh, Final Fantasy and really got into it with fourteen because, like you mentioned, they they reference a lot of the other of, of the other games in in this one. So I've learned through all of them in different ways through here, and so I started playing fourteen uh, about. Eight years ago in oh, 2013. Damn, you're an yeah. OG. When yeah, when the when the beta came out for PS4, mm-hmm. uh, they didn't have a big trial. They had to try up to level 20. Mm-hmm. And it was just a realm reborn. But I, I, I was like, you know what, let me try it. It's a free trial. Uh Final Fantasy is cool. I know Final Fantasy. And uh I I always like to I was into MMOs, never really went into one all the way to endgame and all that stuff. Yeah. So I tried it. I always like to customize my characters as back then as my girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> I always made them after my girlfriend, which is still my girlfriend now. So luckily I've, I've had that, that connection. <laughs> yeah. I've had that connection with her in the game. And uh, so, so I, I've always liked to do that uh, and, and customize them after her, make them look like her and all, and all that stuff. So all, all that good stuff. And I, like you mentioned, you know, falling in love with these characters i have known them since that time yeah you that's know? wild and i i i grew up with them and then i i don't remember exactly what you're talking about in 2.5 i think you i know what you're talking about uh, and i don't know if you're talking about when we lose a certain character is, is that yeah, what you're talking yeah, yeah. about uh-huh. yes like when okay. everyone has to that escape was the f- uh, uh Ulda, yeah. yeah yes there you go exactly exactly so that that was one of the first times in that game where i was like wow yeah, like, this is making me me cry, and and losing them is is so tough. But eventually, I think we're talking about different stuff. I'm talking about uh, Matoya's time in Edelshire. Oh, that 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 Matoya where where we see her. Uh, I'm talking about in Philly. I don't know who who. Oh yeah, yeah. who. Yeah. yeah, is that who we're talking yeah, about? Whatever. <laughs> okay. yeah, that, that's why. Well, <laughs> yeah. So that was yeah. that was a long time ago for me. That's why. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, doing that stuff like that happening is it was was so emotional for me. And then, and then you know, Shadowbringers obviously is super personal, but also does a lot of callbacks to everything. Yeah. You know, so uh, this it, it's it's just so special man. yeah 14 is it, it truly yeah. is so special I, I, you're talking about this the story and all that stuff and and these characters getting to know them and seeing some of them again after years mm-hmm. like and they're different now and and growing up with them is so cool Damn, i wish so interesting i wish but, i i wish i started yeah. back then because like yeah. Ah, oh, man. I, I play I play these games in such a short span, and I, I feel like I've been with them for a very long time, but I can't imagine what it's like to be like, to wait for each yeah. expansion every time, and wait for each patch and see what happens next for like the past That's eight years. That's another thing. I assume this is your first expansion that you're gonna hop in the first day, I'm assuming. Uh, I, I hopped into Shadowbringers day one with my alt character, because uh, I needed, I needed to one. do it okay. for coverage, but my main character, uh, yeah. I was still I was, I had started Stormblood by the time Shadowbringers came out with my main character, so I was okay. I was playing yeah. through a little bit of Shadowbringers. Like I played up to Holminster Switch, so I made it to the first dungeon, uh, and I didn't really know what was going on. So thankfully, it wasn't like terribly spoiled on how the transition happens from Stormblood to Shadowbringers. Yeah, um, it didn't like it didn't ruin anything at all because I had no clue. Like, what the hell? This is a realm like a new the first what the hell is the mm-hmm. first <laughs> exactly. Sh- shit's going down there's like angels killing people what the fuck like <laughs> what the hell is going on um, but it, it's um it's interesting because when when these new expansions when they when they update the game they patch it new expansion comes wow. out uh it's not just the story adding but it's it's the community that changes yeah. as well which is so incredible because everyone you're looking at the chat everyone's so excited everyone's talking and the thing is, uh, I remember Stormblood, 
uh, when the first quest you have to talk to Raoban, mm-hmm. uh, people called that just talking to him an extreme trial because nobody could yeah. do it because <laughs> everyone like was surrounding him. surrounding him. <laughs> yeah. And it would disconnect you always. So that's like a history, like a memory that I have yeah. of, of, you know, the new expansions and stuff. So it's super exciting. You know, expansions are freaking yeah. fun. And now we got Endwalker. So, so let's get in there. All right. Let's do it. Let's, 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 let's go into the thick of it. So this past Friday, we got a new expansion and mm-hmm. called Endwalker Final Fantasy. 14 online and and we saw a trailer oh by the way the trailer uh i know you tweeted this out michael alex underscore mukala on yeah Twitter. that's my guy he he did the dopest remix <laughs> to that trailer music i have that's so awesome mixed with daft punk so if you guys want to check that out check that out my god but yeah that that thing was awesome. i love alex so much yeah and he also did the seven remake thing the that 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 was that was so incredible. Yep. He, he his his goal is to compose for them. So hopefully he gets. Yeah, to he's shooting a he shot. He's that. he's getting noticed by Masayoshi yeah. Soken too. Like they're going back and there forth. There you go, dude. There you go. So great for yeah. him. Uh, so anyway, in the trailer, we don't have to go into all of it because obviously I don't want to, uh, you know, spoiler, spoil spoil it for people. Uh-huh. Um, but so we saw for the first time in a long time we saw Alice and Alphano. Mm-hmm. Uh, in a cinematic trailer yep. and they were with uh, the warrior of light and uh, they were fighting some sort of dragon i think this was narrated by emmett Selk. i think so yeah if if i'm if i'm correct uh but alphano is sporting a new job in this yep. that we'll talk about later i saw those little weapons in the trailer and i was like holy shit dude what is yep. that man oh my god i was like I <laughs> what, kn- did, what are they doing i knew they were gonna show a new class in here i was like yeah i was expecting how, that how are they gonna show it how who's gonna who's gonna be sporting it uh because obviously exactly. we saw a dancer in the shadow bringers um yes uh in, in there and uh um but i was like okay how are they gonna show it off and the fact that they they make alfino uh-huh. the one who takes up the yes new, dude. takes up the new job and, and it looks so fucking cool too like it's not just oh here's really another does. job it's like yo this job has got no. swag like yo this no it, it it does look so cool we'll talk a little bit yeah. more about that job a little bit later but th- there's another thing that i remember being mentioned by alice at the end of Shadowbringers when uh they're in uh more donna at the end uh-huh. and she talks about uh, taking up a new martial art or something. She wants to be do oh, yeah. something different. So I figured they were hinting there at her changing job. Uh, and here we just see that she changes. She has a new wardrobe yeah. uh, change, obviously. But I wonder if maybe she will change jobs in the future. Yeah. At some point. Yeah. Throughout this expansion. Because also uh, Yoshi uh-huh. mentioned that the, the the other new job that's coming with this is a melee DPS. Uh, it is. We, uh, we yes. don't. They haven't said anything about what it is, but uh, maybe maybe it's uh... yeah. Well, We'll predict. Yeah. Predict. We could, I have some predictions. Okay. Um, but other than that, the title class is now Paladin, mm-hmm. uh, which is the exact opposite of Shadowbringers, which was a Dark Knight. Uh, so I know you covered the whole announcement showcase. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't have to go into every single thing. Um, but the story pretty much is the climax of everything we've been going through since the beginning. Uh, the story of Heidelin and Zodiac. Mm-hmm. And then there's a lot of references to Final Fantasy IV, which you said you're starting to play yeah. now. Uh, so, I mean, I haven't played it. Oh, snap, yeah. So, uh, I, I, figured, I figured I should now, seeing this. Yeah. And so what do, you, what do you think about the trailer? How do you, how do you feel about it? Um, obviously, this is, this is, this is just the, the teaser trailer, because um, yeah, the, 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 the full one is probably going to be like six, seven minutes. This is like two and a half <laughs> minutes, but... Um, Man, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. Like, cause, like the whole moon thing is that's the first thing you see. It's crazy in here, and they're not they're not like trying to hide it. That's not trying to be a big surprise. That's that's a thing that they're straight up saying. Like, yeah, we're going to the moon, and you're gonna be there, and there's like <laughs> some shit's gonna go down there. That's the first thing you see, and it's kind of an overwhelming yeah. thing of like, cause we we've throughout the game you see at the Asians, um, they meet mm-hmm. on the moon, and they're like. When they ever, whenever they need to conjure up their their wild schemes or whatever, but it's kind of like always yeah. this thing of like, 
what, what what purpose does it actually serve? Is it just like a way to show that Asians are otherworldly? But the fact that you're walking on it, it just it has like this grand sense of scale um, that Final Fantasy or at least 14 always hits. Um, and I don't know, it, it feels like there's like wild implications for like why you have to do that. What's happening with the world? Because like the whole thing of because at the end of 5.3, you get the the villains. I won't say who they are, mm-hmm. but like the villains are talking about like burning the world down. It's like, okay, yeah, whatever. Y'all are evil and shit. Of course you want to burn the world yeah. down or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. Which I'm not, st- I'm still not terribly convinced uh, as I- I'm not like the villains are always a-, a tricky thing for me. Like I want to, I want to hate a villain, but for, uh, for reasons more than other oh, evil bastards who want to burn the world down. So I feel like there still needs to be a lot more work um, towards that to get me invested in that regard. But you see, that's what MXL was. Uh, He was he was a very relatable, yeah, villain in a way. You understood what he was doing and why he was doing it. So, Uh, so I, I I mean, I I trust them to kind of have the reasons and have that built through either five point five or throughout six point oh with N Walker. But Mm -hmm. in the trailer, you see like the map burning, and then obviously in when transition to the fight fight scene with Alice Alphano and the Warrior of Light like the world is burning around them and when you look at some of the artwork uh, for the one of the some of the new dungeons the world is burning around them so it really feels like things are things are changing like for real for real like cuz Stormblood was about taking back uh your land and then Heaven's Word was about mm. to integrate Ishgardians into the broader story and the Shadowbringers took place on another realm so here it's it's finally like okay we're going to something something with huge implications is going to happen to the world that we've we've had since 1.0 actually yeah um, and i feel like that got across in the in the trailer um but also yeah it's just like a lot of references to like shit burning like you have the mm-hmm. villain <laughs> looking at a pile of something with the i'm watching the trailer right now and just like Looking at a yeah. looking at something burning, like everything's just burning, <laughs> and then you see uh, what's his face, fucking Zeno sitting on a throne watching sh- things burn. <laughs> like what? The- he's bad. He's a bad. I hate that fool so dude. much. I hate him so much, but he's so cool. <laughs> he's so yeah. cool. And then like having so, it, and then it ends with the with the warrior of light looking at the world from the moon. It's just like, yeah, so many questions. It, 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 yeah. So this is something that. Uh, that they did with Shadowbringers 2 was the the cinematic, the trailer and the opening cinematic kind of laid all these cards on the table without telling you anything about that. So it's kind of like this in media res sort of thing. Like, this is where you're going to be. But mm-hmm. that, while well, that might be an exciting part, like, oh, well, how it would like getting to the moon, it's, it's more about the journey, not the destination. <laughs> uh, really, because like Shadowbringers, like, yeah. I you don't realize until the end of Shadowbringers that that whole cinematic is what happens before you get there, before you get to the first is showing all of your what they what you, all of the scions have been doing as they wait for you to show up, and that was mm-hmm. just like such a wild revelation to to see and and feel, and then I feel like this is also showing you this is putting all the cards on the table of what's happening at the end of this thing, but again. Yeah, it's, it's about how you get there, and I just I just love that Alfino and Alice are in this, and that they are a focal mm-hmm. point because I love them so they much. Look so good. Yeah, they look great. It's the first time you get to see them in a cinematic, and they just look incredible. Yeah. Oh, I love yeah. and like having showing Alfino like because you always think of him as a diplomat, right? That's kind of like his thing since mm-hmm. Realm Reborn, and especially in Heaven's Word, and he's been a healer, and Sage is a healing class, but it's also it looks like a very aggressive healing class and i just it does i just love how you get to see alfino be the one who like comes to alice's rescue instead of like alice just whooping ass which she obviously she still does but it's kind of like okay now alfino is like pulling his weight finally like he's been cool Mm -hmm. and i'll protect him all and he'll heal us but to see him like Mm -hmm. pull up like yo motherfucker what's up uh do something like yo that's my guy yo that's my (laughs) guy uh yeah yeah. this yeah obviously i want to see the full thing but this this trailer yeah, there's, there's, is really good. It's really really good. There's still so many things that that we we don't know, and there's so many questions that the trailer raised. Yeah, but uh, but aside from the trailer, we obviously got uh, you know 
of course, with every new expansion, one of the things people are most excited about is new job. Mm-hmm. Uh, with Heaven's Ward, we got Dark Knight, Machinist, the Strologian, and Stormblood, we got two DPS, the Sam and the Red Mage. And finally, in Shadowbringers, we got Gunbreaker and the Dancer. Mm-hmm. And for Endwalker, we're receiving two new classes, like you mentioned earlier, melee DPS. And the healer is the one that they announced this time. Uh, the melee DPS is at FanFest in May, I believe. Mm-hmm. And the healer, I think they also mentioned, well, they did mention that the healers are now going to be uh, split into like two subclasses. There's going to be barrier healers and pure healers. Mm-hmm. Uh, making the white mage and astrology and the pure healers and the scholar and the sage barrier healer. Mm-hmm. D- like you said, they, they look so aggressive. They look so badass. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the, the new lift weapons are like, yeah. like a Gundam reference yep. <laughs> sort of like, like, is this making you want to play healer? Yeah. Do you play healer? I, I, I what, do. what do you play? I, so I'm a I'm a ninja main. Um, okay, that's that's the class I've been uh, playing since day one. Or well, I was mm-hmm. I was monk or pugilist, and then eventually I switched to rogue because yeah, I got to level fifteen, and then I got yeah. rogue and I stuck with ninja, and then I started leveling up uh, monk and other classes along with it. But I always play ninja. That's that's what okay. I'm gonna play when I jump into Endwalker. That's that's what I play when I'm doing all the end game content. Uh, I love yeah. how complex ninja is, like how much stuff you have to juggle. And uh, yeah, with the ninjutsu and all. Yeah, that stuff. I made it hard for myself, but it's a ton of fun. <laughs> I have a lot of fun playing uh, playing ninja. But I do play mm-hmm. healer. I play astrologian as healer because I do like. So the thing too about astrologian is like, because uh-huh. I was thinking about, I want to, pl- I want to play healer. I want to try something different. Um, and this was like, this is after, this is post Shadowbringers. Like I'd already played all the way up to uh, 5.0 by the time I decided to try healing get really really mm-hmm. nervous about that um it is very scary yeah, yeah it's nervous so Extremely yeah nervous. yeah so I, I i have scholar and i have astrologian but i lean towards astrologian because the theme of tarot cards fits in with mm-hmm. the fact that i am playing a persona character <laughs> it's kind of cool it's like oh shit like i, I yeah. we know tarot cards from from persona and the arcana and all that but i think astrologian is fun too because of how much stuff you have to juggle like while pulling up the cards um and doing all that uh, it's I, I got the hang of it. I got the hang of it. So, mm-hmm. but Sage looks yo like the main thing. The reason why I play Ninja is because the number one priority is not like I mean all all the all the jobs and classes in Final Fantasy fourteen are pretty like well balanced. All things considered, like you mm-hmm. can thrive with any any job, any class doesn't really matter as long as you can play that class or job well, you'll be good. Um, so the number one priority for me is looking dope. Like, does this job look dope 100%. to play? Is it fun to play, and does it look cool? Because uh, that's mm-hmm. you know that's the number one thing. I want I want my character to have some swag. I want I want to I want to see them do some of badass course, things. Course. You know, saying that's why I play ninja because ninja looks so cool. Like when you're playing it. So sage, yeah. if like obviously we we got clips of sage in in game. And I'm like, yo, mm-hmm. all right, this is this is I'm gonna switch over. Like astrologian's cool and all, but I'm just like sitting there. I'm like pulling up cards, boom, pulling up cards, boom, <laughs> like. You know, and then like for scholar, you have you essentially have a uh, a summon doing a lot of that for you. But this mm-hmm. sage, oh boy, let's sign me up. Let's go, and it starts at level seventy. No, also, so yeah, it looks awesome. I've a uh, every single expansion that's come out. I played every class that came with mm-hmm. it. So I think all the new uh, classes, not the not the base ones, the newer classes that have come out since Heaven's Word, I have max. Yeah. Uh, so uh, obviously I'm gonna hop into Sage as soon as that comes out, but we're also getting the a uh, freaking melee DPS. Mm-hmm. I thought we were gonna get a caster because we haven't seen one in a while, yeah. and there's only three blue mages that really count. Yeah. It's a, a limited job, so there's only three uh, casters right now. But as for my predictions for melee DPS, I took I'm taking cues from Final Fantasy XI, mm-hmm. and the melee uh physical uh, dps classes that we that had that they have there that we haven't seen yet are beastmaster and puppet master mm-hmm. so i i think we might see a beastmaster what do you how do you i, I actually think i have that? no idea like i i cuz yeah they could just have something entirely new i don't i don't know what they i have, have no idea like if it's yeah i i, I literally have no idea like because there's so many there's so many dps classes and i feel like they've mostly yeah. exhausted all of the all the reference material from uh other previous final fantasies but 
man, I just, it's up in the air, man. Yeah. I'm not going to be making any predictions. This, the thing that they do though, is, uh, with Astrologian specifically, I think there was, it, that was from a reference from a game of, uh, from one of the Final Fantasy games of an NPC that did one thing oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, with their LB3 or something, and then that's how they made this entire yeah. class based off of that one thing. Uh -huh. So obviously it can, it can be anything. I would love to see a Beastmaster. That would be freaking awesome, having someone that you have a, you know, you have constantly have a pet with you yeah. that fights with you. That would, that would yeah. be so freaking cool. I could see that. And they've mentioned it before. And I also don't know if you've you've been playing Bozja. Uh, I think you you did jump into it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I did. Uh, -huh. uh There's a lot of Beastmasters there. Oh yeah. So so that's a huge hint as to okay them bringing that out. So maybe we can see that. That would be awesome. I don't know what we could see. Obviously, they can do whatever they want. Uh, I'll play it either way. Uh, but people are excited for it. People are excited. Yeah. For it, nonetheless, and I'm super excited for that. So yep. freaking awesome. <laughs> so Oh man. But other than classes, we obviously we're always gonna get new areas. Mm -hmm. And here we got we're finally going to Garlemont. Yeah. Which is the heart of the Garlean Empire, which they've been our enemies the entire game, pretty yep. much. So well, what do you think of this place? This looks freaking we didn't get a lot of information on it, but it looks yeah. It looks intense. They they so war torn and I, I don't know. It, it's it's really i feel i feel like this it, th i think this i get a certain feeling from like seeing garlemald burnt to the ground basically mm -hmm. because like you said we've been fighting the garlean empire the entire time and the easy thing to kind of think is like okay when are we going to get there when are we going to like actually take the take the fight to their homeland yeah. and finally like dethrone their um their empire but it's like no, nah, that, that's that's not why we're going to be going there. Like, mm -hmm. this shit is already wrecked by the time we get there. And I think that, that I, I like that twist because it makes you, it, it reminds you that while the Garlean Empire was always your enemies and you always took the fight to them, there's, there's something more, there's something bigger that's driving the, driving conflict in this game. And so, and also judging from the artwork is that, you know, Gar the Garlean Empire is only a how do you, how do I say this? It is only an extension of the broader schemes that are happening. Whenever there's like a villain or whatever, it's mm -hmm. it's like the the Garlean Empire is a tool, but not the source of yeah. the evil that you are fighting. Um, and I feel like that that really uh, hammers that that kind of perspective, that message, and. When you see, when you look at the trailer and the uh, the, uh, the the villain who will, we will keep unnamed, I guess, is um, underground. Mm -hmm. It looks like he's underground, and and when you kind of look at the artwork for one of the dungeons, it looks like you're underground in a sort of like an organic sort of monster ish like mm -hmm. thing. So this has me thinking about like, and like if you played at the end of five point four there's like some connection there that you can already make as to what's happening. So it makes me think like, and <laughs> there's a lot of, I don't know if this, I, I can't remember if this was confirmed or not. Of like, uh, yeah, I think it was in the story that like Hylian is also a primal. So yeah. like Hylian is a living being and this world we call Hylian. I feel like the implications is that below the surface of your planet is actually a living being. That's, mm -hmm. you know, that, that, and when you see what happens at the end of 5.4, it's like the planet itself is the source of the bad shit that has happened in this world. And like the Garlean Empire is just one mechanism of that. So I feel like there's going to be a lot of, a lot of answers to a lot of questions when you get to the Garlean Empire. And I, I feel like with it being leveled, the focus isn't necessarily fighting the fighting in Garlemald, it's like let us sort through the rubble to find out what happened here, but what has what has led to why the Garland Empire is what it is. And obviously yeah. we got we got some answers with that with um Emmett Selk and uh and Xenos and 
mm-hmm. all the family drama that happens like why like who drove the garland empire to rise to power or whatever and what purpose did it serve and how did it get its power and all that i feel like those questions have been largely answered but there's within that are more answers for the nature of the planet itself and i feel like i don't know i'm excited to explore garland finally it's and we saw a little bit of it yep. in patch quests with um with Gaius and Estinian. Uh, but to we actually did. go there and through to peruse the histories there, I think that's that it's gonna have big implications uh for the broader narrative. So I'm excited about yeah. that. Yeah, we also saw the land of Thavnir, mm-hmm. which is like home to the dancer job pretty much and and in that location, we saw Radzat Han, which is like similar to Yulmor. It's it's kind of the the end game location where we have all our vendors. And this this part in the in the showcase is where I sort of teared up because uh-huh. I was like, that is not where I'm gonna spend a lot of my time. Yeah. So I'm so excited <laughs> to be there. Yeah. Uh, this place looks so beautiful. Man. It looked like yeah. a, like a Mayan Moroccan island. I don't know. It looked so so cool uh yeah it, it's yeah um, it, it's very like tropical and yeah like i feel like it pulls from a lot of like south uh and southeast asian like cultural mm-hmm. references and like a lot of like south american uh yeah, exactly. stylings too like a- aztec and like mayan t- type of um imagery mm-hmm. there so i'm i'm really i'm i'm hyped to see how they uh how that's portrayed in the game but it's also just like, oh, this is like a nice new city to be in because like, yo, it's yeah. the end of the world. But, you know, I want to <laughs> obviously they're not going to destroy the whole world because then that would completely wipe the out game. the entire game. Like, obviously, they, which have they done, which they've done before. I mean, <laughs> yeah, if you remember 1.0 <laughs> they they did just, for a reason, though, because yeah, the 1.0 was trash. That was awesome, though. The way they yeah. the way they tied that into the story of the game, along with deleting mm. the game. Never forget it. Nobody can do that. Yeah, that, nobody can do that. That. I still I I tell people to watch that. Have you seen the documentary uh, No Clip? Yeah, yeah. I tell people to watch that before they start playing the game, just so they could see the history of that. Yeah. How, how that that's incredible. But yeah. obviously, that's a big <laughs> but yeah, that view looks cool, man. I'm I'm excited to go there uh, and see see what's up uh, with with that. Obviously, they mm-hmm. get they get into um, much more details than like what it looks like and what you'll be doing there. But yeah, it's one of the bigger zones, and it looks. It looks really dope, and I'm excited to, uh, to hear what kind of music uh, we're gonna get in there oh, that's too. That's another thing, yeah. Like uh, the Raktika Great Wood, awesome music that we have yeah. now in Shadowbringers. So, yeah, that's another thing I haven't thought about the music that we're gonna get in these locations. Mm-hmm. Like, what, what's what are they gonna play in Garlemald and stuff? That I'm excited. Yeah, That'd be great. Yeah, yeah. Um, so obviously they they announced so many other things. We don't have to go through all. Of them. There's just some things I want to touch on. Sure. Um, uh, there's new raids. Uh, obviously, these these are different from before. These are now uh, exclusive to 14, rather than how they have mm. the you know the near one and Final Fantasy 12 and different ones and yeah and stuff like that. These are exclusive to the to the game. They're wholly original. Uh, so, do you get into the raids a lot or? Yeah, yeah. I, I like yeah. I like doing the um, the alliance raids and the normal raids. The alliance raids are the best. Yeah, yeah. Those especially are. like the the two point um the coils of Bahamut. Like mm-hmm. those those are actually like really wild. I did uh I like if you do it for the story, um it basically recounts the like obviously like Al- so in it Alize walks you through all the different uh, implications of what happened in one point and the. Mm-hmm. Uh, of what happened to um, her grandfather, uh, a R.I.P. to uh, to the god uh, Louis, Louis Swa. Louis that's Swa. our that's our boy, and um, I'm re- I'm really I'm always fascinated by how what they do. Mm-hmm. Like Alexander's great, Omega's great, and um, the Eden raids are, are are great as well. Like the story yeah. between Reen and Gaia, like yo, people you make are it to in the love end. with that right now. Yeah, that's... you make it to the end of the Eden raids. I'm like yo yo no, <laughs> her memories no, we gotta fight. Uh, and they, they always do something special and it's never it's never like this one-off thing just to have content for content's sake there's always implications so as for the alliance raid here it's like for the past two like you mentioned the near automata for uh, near automata crossover for shadowbringers and then the um the final fantasy 12 and tactics crossover for um stormblood but 
Yeah, they basically said that the ally the twenty four player alliance raid this time around is going to answer questions uh, like lingering yeah. questions uh, about the world. And I'm like, okay, that that's that, I kind of wanted like, as exciting it is as it is to kind of um, dream up whatever crossover you want because like I don't know maybe there's like a yeah uh, there's like a Evangelion crossover or some mm-hmm. kind of other like crossover with another Final Fantasy or whatever. Uh, I really want to. I feel like they can do so much more uh, with with what with the lore of this world if they focus these alliance raids on the game itself. And also the A-player raid is, you know, they tease that it's centering around La Habrea, who is obviously someone that we haven't seen since since 2.0. Yeah. We, we beat they ass, right? We did. Uh, or th- yeah. And then, so there's, I kind of I like that both, both the raid sets, it, at, at least from what they've said so far, are focusing on um, going deeper into the lore mm-hmm. rather than, like, trying to create... Um, completely new stories i mean they they will be completely new stories in the broader context but uh, they will serve as to be a better understanding of final fantasy 14 itself and that that's like i mentioned that yeah like stories are the things that hook me the most and so if that's the focus of those i'm i'm hyped up for them man yeah yeah we also we also got new dungeons as always the new dungeons are always coming Mm-hmm. and uh which all look great we just got art on them so we don't know much about them yeah. but we also got estinian as a new trust system yeah. party member and so i want to ask you michael who's your favorite character in the game mine is ishtola Ish- i love it yeah so i was gonna say yo ishtola yeah. yo uh, hey cat girls you know what i'm saying <laughs> oh she's the best i i yeah she's she's the best she's so great i love her attitude um, and she's so she i think she's probably the most powerful one there yeah, because she yeah. she does she does a lot of shit for us. Yeah, like she, yo, it, <laughs> yeah. When the when the shadow when the, in the Shadowbringer cinematic when when everything's burning down on the Rocktika Great Woods, she's scared. like she's like Nah, man, we're we're fucking holding the line until the yeah. warrior like gets here. I don't mm. give a fuck, and I'm like, <laughs> Yo, let's go. And, yes, dude. And then the guy got uh, Urian J in the back, like, Hey, like, listen, we we yeah. have a choice here. We can we can embrace this fate or we can do something else. He's like, Nah. Mm. Hell no, nah. we're staying right <laughs> fucking here. And yeah. also, she's like, um, I don't. It also, it also makes for very warm moments, like at mm-hmm. the end of the Kitana Ravel when, um, she looks up at the sky and asks Urianje to describe it to her, and I'm just like, fuck, yeah. shit. Those yeah. moments get to me, and she's like, how, how, uh, she's also a scholar too. Like, obviously, Urianje kind of leads the charge in terms of, um, unpacking like the world and how it works and all this stuff as we've seen throughout the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she is also someone who um, has a lot of knowledge to share as well, to impart on everyone else. Yeah. And she's like the most level headed uh, as well. Um, and I feel like Ali say and Alfino learn a lot from her. And as the player, you learn a lot from her as well. Uh, so she's, she's, and she's, she's, you know, cat girls, you know, you know what I'm yeah, saying? She's, <laughs> a, hey, she's pretty. She's pretty. Yeah, she, she's, she's the one, she's the one, uh, Top tier, top tier waifu. I yeah. love her so much. Oh, I, I, uh, so I will always take her into the trust. So it's always so I'm DPS, she's DPS, and then I always have um, uh, Alfino as my uh, healer. Mm-hmm. And I gotta use I gotta use Thancred, yeah, as my tank because I have no mm-hmm. choice. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Thancred. But yeah. So there's there's a uh, two last things that I want. Um, the island sanctuary that they mm-hmm. talked about here. It looks like we're getting a uh, Animal Crossing, yeah, up in Final Fantasy now, dude. So I don't, you, we never gotta leave, you know what yeah. I mean? What, yeah. And the, what do you? <laughs> are you gonna? Are you gonna go into this? Or are you gonna do this? Probably. Uh, I haven't. I haven't dove deep too much into crafting and gathering. So yeah. they're pitching Island Sanctuary as a thing that anyone can do. Like you don't have to have exactly a high level crafter or gatherer like you do for Ishgard Restoration. Mm-hmm. Um, like Ishgardian Restoration is like such a such an like smart concept it's so awesome yeah it's it, it is such a smart move um that ties into the story that gives crafters and gatherers such like a greater purpose um but i haven't been able to engage with it because i'm mm-hmm. not i'm not at that level i don't dive deep too deep into i would like to but i just i'm just not there yet 
yeah. with it. So if this is this is kind of like that as or it seems like it's going to be something similar, but not for crafting and gathering like Harvest Moon type stuff. Like, yo, I, I can chill on a on a nice chill yeah. island in the game mm-hmm. after <laughs> after we save well, we're going to save the world and go to the moon. But, you know, I can come back to my farm and, yeah. you know, tend to some animals and just relax. And yeah, it looks is, like you could release your minions and stuff like that. So, yeah, That's yeah. Cool. And it just. Final Fantasy XIV has such a variety of of gameplay experiences. Mm-hmm. It's not just about like queuing up for extreme or savage, like extreme trials or savage raids, man. Yeah, um, I just feel like they just keep delivering, man. Like they really do. whatever, whatever, whatever this might be. There's probably going to be like some th- quirks to work out because it's completely new content. It's not like building off of anything previously we've seen already. So yeah, there may be some quirks to it. But the fact that they're like they're trying again to implement something else, like mm-hmm. unmatched. Yeah, in terms of like the breadth of content, you mentioned this Guardian restoration. I think you know, for the people that are watching or listening to this, I wanna, I wanna touch on that a little bit because it is so cool. So mm-hmm. there's crafters and gatherers in the game. Obviously, the, those different classes that you that you craft and gather with. What they do with this Guardian restoration is there's this there's this uh, I guess you could say town or residential district that is all dismantled and destroyed. Yeah. So. They have uh, pretty much set all the crafters and gatherers in the games, in the servers, to start turning in uh, different items, uh, crafting different things, repairing different things, to eventually make this residential district a real thing in the game for people to start yeah. living in. So the, the, every server is adding to it, to eventually now in this new expansion, it will be completed and people can start living in these <laughs> in these homes. It's such a cool concept oh, that man. they're doing that. I touched on I, I went into it for a little bit when it first came out, but I, I get like you, I'm not really into the crafting gathering stuff. So it, it's it is a cool you know, aspect of the game that they do for those for the crafters and the gatherers. So yeah. yeah. That, that's the thing, that's another thing about Final Fantasy Fourteen is like how interconnected everything is. It's not just like stories between expansion packs and things that have been referenced in previous mainline stories yeah even even th- something like the crystal tower being the basis for yeah. shadowbringers the crystal mm-hmm. tower 2. Uh, 2.0 content mm-hmm. is the basis for 5.0 content yeah and the way like how closely tied and how smartly tied together that is is a testament to how how much forethought they have but also the fa- and I also talked to, when I talked to Yoshi P, um, about like how they make different content. He's just like, I want players can play whatever they want, but the more that you play, the more you realize how interconnected everything is because we don't want to put something there just for the sake of content. Yeah. It has, it serves a purpose for players' understanding and investment in the world. So even something like Ishgardian Restoration, and then now you're gonna get a re- residential district. For players to actually buy houses in Ishgard, that's so cool, man. That it is, mm. it is man. awesome. Yeah, uh, so awesome, man. So yeah. awesome. everything <laughs> they announced. Obviously, we didn't go through all of it. We could go through all of it for the rest of the day. Uh, obviously, don't want to keep you here, Michael, the whole day. Oh, I'm but, chilling. I'm but, chilling. I, I, I would. I would. But <laughs> I don't want to do that. Maybe you want to see the Super Bowl mm. or whatever. You know, who knows? Who knows? Um, I'm not, who knows? Fantasy <laughs> takes priority. You know what I'm saying? I mean, of course. I mean, we as, haven't even get to 5.5. So if you stuck around always. and watched the live letter, I did not actually. I did not uh, want to get into the live that. letter too. It was like midnight. And I was. I got like a wild headache. Yeah. And I was like, all right, I'm finishing up my story. Boom, publish. Uh huh. All right. <laughs> I I saw a video on a little summary of it, but they said after that new expansion announcement, it wasn't too much. You know, like, how are you going to follow up after all that stuff? Yeah. So, but there's some good stuff in that live letter that, that we're going to see that's going to, I guess, connect to, to Endwalker. Yeah. So, awesome for that. What do you, what do you want to see for the future? Like, I want to see some money in my bank account. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> for the future of Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah. I see Kyle over there nodding. Yo, you know the vibes. I forgot to, I forgot to mention Kyle's here with us. Mike, uh, Kyle, if you have any questions. He's not on camera, hello. but he's, he's there. He's listening. So, <laughs> hello, Kyle. I forgot to mention you earlier. Sorry about oh. that. But uh, he's here. He, has, he doesn't play. He, he should. 
He should. Maybe one day. <laughs> As all you guys should. I've 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 yeah, I've, I've, I've played all of the like mainline Final Fantasy games from ten to the most mm-hmm. recent one, but none of the online ones. So I've skipped eleven and fourteen. So. You'll, yeah. you'll get there you'll get there eventually it, i mean it, uh, it, so, it looks it looks good but i just have no idea that there's there's so much i'm just like uh this yeah, is a lot yeah <laughs> it, it can be it can be over i i, I totally understand yeah. like as much as i try to convince people to do it mm-hmm. um like i want to respect people's like <laughs> uh decisions or like you know it's, sure. maybe the now is not the time so yeah i feel you sure. no pressure man no pressure <laughs> yeah. Sp- speaking uh, of getting people to play the game so I obviously, uh, when you accepted doing this, Michael, I asked people on Twitter uh, to ask you questions, ask me or you questions, whatever they want to ask. And uh, we got a few questions about people that want to get into the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, you answered one of them. Uh, DJ yeah. Chris V at Chris V Miami, he asked you, as a complete noob, how would I get started? I want to get to the moon. And you <laughs> hey, responded hey, with, all? yeah, you responded with your beginner article. Uh, which again, everyone go check out awesome thing right there. Uh, so that you answered, but here's another one that I want to ask. you. This is from Kevin Diaz at the K Diaz one, two, three. He asked, would this be a good jumping on place for someone that played final fantasy seven remake as their first final fantasy Mm. and loved it so much that they played the original all the way through. I'm still kicking around the idea of jumping into 15 and 16 when they come out, but what about 14? Ooh, um, I, you know what? The, the thing about Final Fantasy 14 is like, you don't, you don't need any, like, obviously there's a lot of references to Final Fantasy, but you don't need to know anything about the previous games. It's yeah. for, there's a lot of people who this is their, this is their first and for some, this is their only Final Fantasy game um, because it's such a different beast. And I yep. always say there's no ev- with each each patch with each update, there's never been a better time to jump into the game. Um, but yeah, this this is, this is a perfect time to get into <laughs> this. It's always the best time uh, to get That's into true. the game. Uh, but I do think I always I'm, I'm sure when you talk to people about the game and I always mention this, too, is to kind of set your expectations when getting first into it. If you are not, if you're not familiar with how MMOs work, um, especially, but also just like I love what A Realm Reborn does, mm-hmm. but understand that it's not the most exciting thing uh, in the game. It, it's the quests are pretty ver- are very basic, and some of the exposition might not matter to you. It will like those things matter eventually, but as long as you have a like you pay a decent amount of attention to what happens in A Realm Reborn. I think that's that's good enough. So, and it takes a lot of time to get there. They've truncated a Realm Reborn um, from with uh, the five point three patch, so yeah. it's not as drawn out as it once was. It still can be a little bit. It, it still takes some time to get there, but yeah, after five point three, it's kind of like okay, now's the time if you want to start. Start now uh, because of how much they've condensed the game and just improved the the overall beginner experience. So yeah, now mm-hmm. now's a now's a great time to get into it. But uh, yeah, like peep my guide if you need a little bit of um a little bit of like setup for it. Other than, like because for me, I jumped into it straight up. I didn't look at no guides. I was just like, I played an MMO before, and just like boom, all these men using screens popping up. Like wait, what? Huh? So the only the only <laughs> thing yeah. the, the main advice I would give is just follow the main story quests. That's that's all you really need, um, because that will teach you how to navigate the world. And then from there, once you once you get your feet wet, once you once you start progressing through the uh, and experience the dungeons, uh, which are very be- beginner friendly, especially in uh, Realm Reborn, um, I think that will give you a broader like you'll have the experience. Like okay, now I understand what's what in the world. Um, so yeah, definitely definitely give it a try if it's your first Final Fantasy, if it's your first MMO, perfect for that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And hey, the, like we always say, the free trial, yo, that free trial is looking real nice. You got it is a, you got, it's a meaty. Uh... Free trial, it is. You get a lot free. of content for free. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's th- there's restrictions on what you can do, but none of the restrictions affect how you play the game in the. It doesn't affect how you move in yeah. the early hours of the game. So that's stuff that you only really need to worry about once you get deep into like the later expansions. So there's like no, you have nothing to lose uh, by going yeah. into the free trial. So 
That's cool. that on that. All right. Well, Kumail at Kumail H on Twitter asked a three part question, although we answered two of these okay. uh, earlier in the, in the, in the episode. The one was, what do you love most about 14? I mean, we talked about it the entire yeah. time. So, <laughs> you know, that uh, two, what got you into 14? You mentioned that as uh-huh. well. Uh, but three, I would like to touch up on. You get to add one thing into the game. What would it be and why? Oh, fuck, that, that's, damn, that, that's, that's a big question. What would I add uh, to the game? Like, What would you like to see them oh, collaborate this is... with? I've seen them like do Dragon Quest and oh, stuff yeah, like they, that. Yeah. I've seen them do... Uh, Yo, Yo, Kai yeah. watch uh, collaboration like yeah, that. Yeah, the crossover or... stuff is really dope. Uh, but yeah. I think what I would want to see, especially if, once we get to Endwalker, like I don't think this is going to happen. But like if I were to dream up something, I think more custom animations in cutscenes, or to have mm-hmm. more have the the dialogue sequences be more expressive. And I understand like the limitations of that because they use. Um, emotes that are already established in the game and gestures uh within those uh within those kind of dialogue sequences um yeah but i think this this is something that a lot of players allude to with when in regards to 1.0 is that those dialogue sequences were a little bit more um and maybe this is like part of the like why the production process was so hard for that game it's because they they put a lot of resources into making custom animations and um, having putting a little bit more custom uh, care into those dialogue sequences, I would love to see that because, as a, because like the first question is like, what's my favorite part of the game? Is like the storytelling, and I think that would that would that would make the that would I think that would improve the storytelling. So I I would I would like to see that whether it's an Endwalker or whatever comes after uh, once we finish the Highlands already arc arc story arc. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think think that would be dope but um that's what i would want to see is a little, like a little bit more pizzazz yeah. in the in the dialogue there because like the voice acting mm-hmm. is incredible already and yeah it is yeah as for as for a crossover i think uh the way we saw monster hunter come into the game yeah uh i wanted a i was thinking of another capcom franchise i think it would be so cool to see resident evil you know in what this game. I, it's funny you mentioned that because if you obviously play the end of 5.4 yeah i think i think that that could work i think that could work yeah Yeah. you know what i'm saying i think that would be so cool (laughs) to like like we have like a a a trial with nemesis or something or a trial boss fight against the 10 foot tall lady from resident evil village (laughs) yes dude oh my god that would be so incredible you know what it's not out of the realm of possibility wilder things have happened have you did you play the final fantasy 15 crossover quests of course yeah it's like yo noctis is here boom it was so cool yeah okay (laughs) exactly but the way the way they, they immediately like make it so it's normal yeah you know what i mean like contextualized like, wow this is yeah. crazy uh, it yeah it, this is happening now <laughs> like so that that's awesome the way it does yeah so i would love to see like a resident evil hey. crossover that's <laughs> intense um but so we also i got three more things here mm-hmm. uh entirely unrelated to final fantasy so we could just let's just decompress cool. chill and then we get out of here um let's see here i have lit mommy at thermopolit on Twitter, she asks one number one. What is your fave fast food restaurant? That's a good question. Um, my favorite fast food restaurant is Jollibee. Uh, it's Jolli- Jollibee's a Filipino fast food restaurant. <laughs> so oh, they serve yeah, they serve like Filipino American fusion, and they also just have straight up Filipino food. They have the best breakfast menu in the world. I don't I don't give a fuck what anyone says. Jollibee's got the nice. best breakfast menu because it's, it's straight up Filipino breakfast, which is garlic fried rice, eggs, and whatever whatever oh oily meat you want. That's our breakfast. That sounds great. That is a Filipino ass That's breakfast a- right there. <laughs> then I'm gonna I'm gonna mention Pollo Tropical. I don't know if you heard no. of Pollo Tropical. That's like in Miami, South Florida. Okay. It's a it's just a Cuban restaurant, like a Cuban fast food restaurant. Ooh. They have the rice, the beans, the the chicken, the, the pork, and all that good stuff they also so. serve a uh, cubano 100 yeah, yeah, yeah they have all those different ooh, kinds of sandwiches yeah. oh shit hell yeah oh yeah 
definitely for sure. Yeah. Both are pick the best. And and now I, now I live in freaking Atlanta. I, I when I first moved here, they had like two locations mm-hmm. here, but then they got rid of all of them because nobody likes that here. I Damn, know why. I hate to see it. Nobody likes that here, dude. So whatever. Whenever oh. I go back, I have I have <laughs> yeah. that. But uh, her second question is when this is weird. <laughs> when you have guests in your home. How long do you wait until you kick them out? That's a good question. Um, you know what? I will. I want them to stay for as long as they want. So that's so nice. I'm the type of person who goes to a party, and I'm almost always the last person to leave because I'm like, I'm always like, yo, 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 the night is young. Mm-hmm. The night is young. The drinks is cold. Like, let's keep it going. Let's keep <laughs> it going. Like, I don't want this to end. Let's keep it going. So yeah. If I have people over, I do the same thing. Like, oh, I don't know, man. Hey, if you want to, if you want to sleep over, like it's cool. I'll roll. Up. Like, I, <laughs> I got you. On, like, man. you can stay on the couch or whatever, um, or whatever. And then so, I never. It's never like, all right, y'all, y'all need to dip out. I remember the yeah. What was it? The um, the night I had to move to San Francisco, uh, because I'm yeah, I'm from San Diego, and I moved to San Francisco for the job at Gamespot. Um, I remember the night because I was driving in the morning. I was leaving early, like six o'clock in the morning. But uh, I had all my friends over. We we're like, "Hey, yo, let's turn up one last time before I got to move out." I wasn't turning up because mm-hmm. obviously I had to drive the next morning. But I, it was like two o'clock in the morning. I'm like, "Wait, y'all going to dip?" I'm like, no, don't, don't leave. The <laughs> night is young. It's two a.m. in the morning. You're leaving at six, bro. Oh, <laughs> I was not having it uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the next morning. But uh, so that that's 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 me, man. Cool. All right, we got, what do we have here? Let's see. Uh, Steph at Queen Stephanie asks, if you were to get a Final Fantasy tattoo, what would you get? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. I've actually been thinking about it. So I, I have Persona tattoos, actually. Oh, that's um, nice. So I got uh, the Joker mask from Persona 5. I'm still, like, I'm, I'm, I want to do, like, a full, um, the, the goal was to do a, a full uh, forearm with all um, fi- um, yeah. Persona stuff, so. Uh, and I have all the school emblems on this side of my arm. Uh, we get the mask. I get the 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 TV from Persona Four and the Dark Hour Clock from Three. And then I have like um, a bunch of other references. Um, but I was also thinking about like I want to get a fourteen piece. I was originally thinking mm-hmm. of a, of an etherite, uh, like on my on my arm. That would be awesome. Yeah. So I have an etherite because uh, I think that's like a really good representation of of Final Fantasy fourteen. Because obviously, like every every core yeah. town, any Anywhere where people gather, people gather around mm-hmm. the etherite. It's home. That's true. You teleport back home through the etherite, and I feel like that's mm-hmm. like a really, um, it's a great representation of what Final Fantasy means to me. Also, because fourteen yeah. feels like a home. I log in. I'm like, oh shit, my free company. Like, hey, what's good, y'all? Like, y'all want to run dailies? Mm-hmm. Um, y'all, yeah, yeah. I don't know. We all want to meet up. Like, let's do some savages, or whatever. <laughs> um, I feel yeah. like that's a really good representation. Uh, but I also thought about. 5.3 means is probably my favorite thing ever in all of Final Fantasy. Like obviously I said it's probably one of my favorite things ever in video games was uh 5.3. So I was also thinking about so the the 5.3 artwork where it's the Crystal X arc with his hood on and he's uh holding the crystal in his hand. Like I think that mm-hmm. artwork is so dope and I would I yeah. almost want to get a piece of uh get that actually like done inked up is crystal exarc holding a crystal because uh Ooh, that would be intense yeah that would be very detailed um but also like <laughs> crystal exarc who i guess i won't name him <laughs> uh, we all know yeah. now if you're caught up it's it's very obvious like at the, yeah. if you've already finished out shadowbringers or got deep into shadowbringers we already know who it is but he's one of my favorite characters in all the games i i love him very much uh that's my guy and uh that'd be cool but also the the ending quote that he says at the end of 5.3 I think it would also accompany, like if I get an etherite, I would also have the quote that he says uh, at the very end when you're uh, going back to the Crystal Tower. I think that's a very, a very profound moment in the game. And I think it's mm-hmm. uh it's a really cool, um, it's kind of a, it's kind of a thing that you can take into your, your own life a little bit. So yeah, it's in the context of the game, whatever, but you as the player, like this is your character. The, the character you play is an extension of you and the Crystal Exarch is talking to you. So I took that moment very yeah. personally. Um, and that's also part of why I like Crystal Exarch so much is because uh, obviously his character is very important, but uh, I think Crystal Exarch has a very special connection to the player character that no other character in that world uh, has. So That's true. 
got to represent my boy. Yeah. I, I would I would personally like to get, you know, like the job symbols. Mm, mm-hmm. Just a small little job symbol, one of my favorites. That's cool, yeah, yeah. Like a dragoon symbol. Because that's something that, like, people say, oh, that's a cool symbol. What, what is that? And they don't, like, really have to know. Yeah. If you know, you know. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's, that it's definitely that thing, yeah. So that that would be a cool little thing to have. I don't have any right now, so that would that would be really cool to get a nice little tattoo. Yeah. Like that. All right. One more here. Four part. You don't got to answer all. Like, oh, no, we're getting into it. So much. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's see. Okay. Number one, this from Sarah at Nishnook on Twitter. What has been your most awkward or embarrassing <laughs> moment while gaming or in life? Or in life. <laughs> that's like a yeah, wild gap. Just... Like while you were gaming yeah. or just like in your entire life. Or in life. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. my God. I have so I have this thing where I'm just like minding my own business. I'm like sitting down and then all of a sudden like I'm having a good day. And all of a sudden, something will pop into my head of something like wildly embarrassing I did in my life, and just ruins the rest what? of my day. But the thing is, I can't, I can't pull those memories. They're suppressed memories, so I can't like pull them out. Yeah, that's true. Out of a hat, uh, and also they are embarrassing for a reason. <laughs> oh <laughs> my god, um, <laughs> shit! And gaming, I don't know. I don't really get into. Uh, I don't really. So I don't really like when I play competitive games. It's more like if I lose, I'm just trash or whatever. So I don't know if I have yeah. a really embarrassing moment in the game in a game um or in yeah, life. It's hard, to ask. it's hard to think about. Man, I've I said a lot of stupid shit on Tumblr. And like <laughs> I would Tumblr did. <laughs> Yeah, or in Zango. What's what's a, what's a really embarrassing? Ah, is mm, I'll just say Spare I'll just say <laughs> that I didn't know how to talk to girls in in like middle school, <laughs> high school, and I said like some really embarrassing shit. Oh, here we go. Uh, <laughs> let's take it back to second grade. So, like okay. I said, I was playing a lot of RPGs at the time, and I I, I had a crush on this girl. I was we, second grade, yeah. And then I I I confess <laughs> confess my love. I confessed <laughs> to her, and I was like, uh, yo, I. I, yo, you're the one for me or whatever. And I, in my mind, I was like, so that was playing out in my mind differently. I was like, okay, this is going to be like, uh, I don't know, like Princess Peach and Mario from Super Mario RPG or whatever. And I'm going to save the princess, whatever. So I was just like thinking like, damn, it's, it's going to be wild. It's going to be like an RPG. And I'm going to like, I remember all the dialogue sequences from Final Fantasy. So I got words. I got, I got these wild words to pull from. She's definitely going to fall, fall in love with me. And then she's just like, I... It is like wasn't wasn't listening to me, so I think that that is that was my first embarrassing moment because I thought I I thought I had that swag to play yeah. video games. Like, man, I'm smarter than all you motherfuckers out here, and she's gonna want me. Didn't work out like that, so uh, that's that on the head. <laughs> uh, I think we could end it there, Michael. Okay, that's a, yeah, we don't gotta ask wanna... the other three. That's uh, that's the other. I don't know if you if you're looking at it too. Yeah, I'm Let's looking see. at it. Uh, I can do rapid fire. If gaming didn't exist, what, what do you think would I'd be doing? Okay, I'd probably be. Uh, I previously worked in politics, so I might be doing that, or or I might mm-hmm. be writing about music. I like writing about music, or I would probably be um, just watching hella anime. I'd be doing the same thing, but instead oh, yeah. of video games, it would be anime. <laughs> uh, uh, when I lose real bad, how do I cope? I tell myself, um, uh, I tell myself I'll get over it. That's it's just the game. Yeah, <laughs> like one, if you're losing, to, uh, oh yeah, if you lose a game. Yeah. Back in high school, yeah. one of my homies always said, like, jokingly to people, like when something bad happens to them, it's like you'll get over it. And it's like funny mm-hmm. because that's fucked up, but it's something I always tell myself, like, it's you'll, true. You'll, you'll get mean, over it's... it, and then I get over it. Like, oh, get, <laughs> get over it. I lost two hours of progress because a save got corrupted. I'll get over it. Uh. It yeah. sucks, but I'll get over it. And what's my outfit of choice? When I game, so Deion Sanders once said, look good, play good. Play good, get paid good. Get paid good, live good. Uh, or, damn, I fucked that up. <laughs> look good, feel good, feel good, play good, play good, get paid good. There you go. That's, that, was, that was the whole thing. So wow, I, those are nice words to live by. So I, I, I like to get comfortable, but I don't, I don't want to feel, I don't want to feel sloppy. Like, I gotta, I gotta clean up my room, I gotta take a shower, I gotta put in like, Basically, what I would wear to the gym. It's like, yo, I feel, mm-hmm. I feel like I'm gonna, I'm gonna pump, I'm gonna pump some iron right now. I'm gonna pump out these, these dailies. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I like, mm-hmm. I like to, I like to feel good when I, because I want to associate feeling good with gaming. Like I don't wanna, 
uh, feel like a slob when I'm because then then I'll remember how it felt to play these moments. Like I gotta I gotta impress the characters I'm in front of when I play these games. So yeah, that's something that y'all should keep in mind too. Associate gaming with feeling good because games are special and y'all should enjoy them to their fullest. Exactly. Exactly. That's and it. That yeah. is where we can end that. Yeah. Michael, Yo. thank you so much for being here. Nah, thank you. I appreciate you being here. Hey, hey. I, I, I appreciate a, you, man. Like, uh, this is cool, man. Like you, like you yeah. said earlier, it's, it's different in these times because we're more likely to connect with folks over the internet. So, um, yeah, I'm glad we got to do this. And I, obviously, I love chopping it up with folks who play Final Fantasy because there's so much to get into. We just understand each other on a different level. Yeah. Like, I just, we just, you just get it. We just know already. Like, I don't got to <laughs> yeah. explain it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, so that's really cool. And I appreciate you popping up into the streams and um, just chilling. I really do. I've been mm-hmm. streaming a while, but I'll be back on it. I got some work, work to knock out, but I always yeah. appreciate with you that, showing up. With that being said, where can the people find you? You can find me on Twitter at Michael P. Hyam. Uh, that's uh, Michael P. H I G H A M on Twitter. That's, that's where I mostly um, share things. Uh, that's my main social media thing. Uh, it's where I've made a lot of connections with folks. And uh, also, uh, if you want to catch a stream, you can find me at twitch.tv slash, slash BrazyAsian. B-R-A-Z-Y-A-Z-N. Uh, and I don't know. I, I stream Final Fantasy XIV sometimes, but I'm playing through the original Nier and the original Deus Ex. And those have been going well. I'm going to pick those back up soon. Uh, so yeah, if you want to pop into a stream, chill with us. That'd be dope. Yeah. Awesome. If you guys want to check me out, you can find me on Twitter at Gino underscore Viteri. That's G-I-N-O underscore V-I-T-E-R-I. And you can check me out on Twitch, too. If you want to see my most recent reaction, to want to watch me cry or whatever you Oof. want to do, to that Final Fantasy XIV yes. showcase, you can check me out at twitch.tv slash Gino V-I-I. That is G-I-N-O-V-I-I. And of course... You can check out The Whatnots at The Whatnots on Twitter, The Whatnots on YouTube, which is where you're watching this now. Please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And you guys, thank you, Michael, for being here. Hey. Thank you, Kyle, for being in the background. You want to say something? You want to say bye? I was stuck Eat? on mute for, for a sec there, but yes. Thank, okay, thank there you. he goes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, everyone, hope you're having a good day. Hope you have a, rest of, a good day for the rest of your day. See you guys. Peace.